Hello there, in this video we're going to look at some of the different ways you can record audio in a door. In this case we're going to call it different recording modes and these are different types of methods that we can use to either record new information or record new information whilst managing the information we might have already recorded on a track. You could choose to record a track from start to finish but sometimes it's best to break it down into sections and use the left and right locator. So this area is highlighted and if I move my mouse up, I get the hand and if I press down with my hand, the whole area becomes blue and that's because I've enabled cycle record mode and I can also do that in the transport window. Now, once I hit record, it's going to start recording wherever I start the recording, but as I move through to the end of this cycle point, which is right now, it's going to jump back to the start of the cycle point and it's going to continue to record over and over again in a loop over the top of this section that I have highlighted with my left and right locator and the cycle point enabled. So now I'm just creating multiple recordings of this section. If I want to see them, then I can turn on that blue icon there and show lanes. Now if I wanted to, I could go and listen to each of these different recordings and I could get my comp tool and I could start to comp in between each of these different recordings that I've done. And comping means basically I just select different versions or different parts from each individual take. But there's plenty of videos on how to comp on the Cubase YouTube channel. For now, let's continue to look at different modes. Another way of specifying where you want to record is to use this punch in and punch out feature down in the transport bar. We can set the lock and enable the punch in punch out points to lock into the left and right locator up in that top area there. So very similar to a certain extent to the cycle point, except you still need to have the cycle point on to loop it backwards and forwards. As soon as I hit play or the space bar, the record enable button is deactivated. But as soon as we hit that left punch point, it starts recording and the record enable button is activated. We can hear what we're recording. And now Cubase has started the recording right on that left locator. Now, if the cycle point wasn't in, it would also stop recording at the right locator. But because we're cycle recording, we're still giving ourselves that two bars in so we can hear up until the cycle point. So basically we hit space bar and as soon as it hits that left point, it starts recording over the top of the track that we have selected. In this case, we've got the cycle point deactivated and you can see that it has stopped recording at that right locator and the track has continued on playing. So it's a really precise way of getting control over exactly when we're going to record and at the same time you can see that I'm still retaining or keeping all of the information that I've recorded previously. So we're not losing anything that we've already recorded. The really nice thing about recording like this is that we get everything cleanly stored in sections of our song. So this might just be an early section of a verse or something like that and we've got everything neatly stored from the left and right locator point. You might like the cycle record mode, but you or whoever's performing might want to bar in at the start of the cycle point and even a bar at the end so that you can think about what you're going to play. In which case you can go down to the transport and you can turn off the lock function. Now you can hold down on the punch in point and set your locator and hold down on the punch out point and it will automatically set the punch in and the punch out to wherever you have your track locator. So you can move it around just by clicking up in the timeline. So now you can see that we've got these two little red left and right handles up in the locator section. When it gets that handle, it's going to kick out of record mode. Now it's going to loop back and now it's going to kick into record mode. So we don't need to set the punch in and punch out points to the left and right locator points up in the timeline. We can just simply use our mouse and move the locate around and automatically set them. You can also automatically set them by holding down Alt and Option on your computer keypad and pressing it on the punch in and punch out points. Now we can also go and get our range tool and we can highlight a section of the song and go up to the transport menu and now we've got punch points and we can do everything that we've just done here but of course now we can also set punch points to the selection. So now you can see that left and right point are set exactly to the area that we highlighted or selected with our range tool. So there's a number of different options. 
Now we can specify an audio record mode that defines how we manage the information we've already recorded. So I've taken my punch in and punch out off, and now I've gone back to using my cycle points in my left and right locator. With cycle history and replace selected, and I'll just turn on lanes, you can see that I can hit record and it's starting to record from the start of the cycle point. So from the start of my left locator. Now, as it gets to the right locator, it's doing the same thing that it did before. So it's basically cycling backwards and forwards. And you can see that it's saying take two and take three for lane two and lane three. So it's very organized. But as soon as we hit stop, it will remove all of the information that we had from the previous record. So this is only documenting and only keeping the information from the last time we hit record. So it's not keeping everything that we had before. Now, I prefer to keep everything because I'm a hoarder, but I don't record orchestras. So if I was recording an orchestra, I would probably use replace, which means that every time I stop and start again, it's really only going to keep the very last take. So basically what it's doing is it's recording through the cycle record mode. Once it gets to the right hand point, it's removing everything from the previous cycle record and it's only keeping the very last take. So it's replacing everything every time it records. And don't be confused by the three takes that are still below there. As soon as I hit stop, they're all gone. So it's basically the last take. So it's up to you in terms of how you work, but for me, Keep History is the default and it makes the most amount of sense. Thank you for taking the time to stop by and check out this video on record modes inside of Cubase. Please subscribe to the Cubase YouTube channels for plenty more videos just like this. I'll see you there.